Will. Oops. Caught me listening to uh, some headphones. I'm listening to the uh, Ultrasound 750, Pro 750. I know this. I know this sounds like a commercial, but trust me, it's not. I use um, I use headphones to um, kind of negate the sound of the room, and these are particularly a good choice because they're very flat and they're non-fatiguing. They uh, incredible. Check them out on the web. Ultrasound, Ultrasound 750s, and um, a lot of times if uh, my room's a little live, so if I want to check, ref you know, delays and reverbs and stuff, it's, it's just easier to throw on a set of headphones and then, and then the room becomes uh, a non-factor. What we're going to talk about today is something that some of you might like, some of you might not. About half my friends use some sort of referencing technique when they're mixing, and the other half uh, say that it's the worst thing that you could ever do. So I personally use it probably more than anybody. I like to... Uh, play DJ while I'm, while I'm working. If your brain is wired to where it messes with you to hear something else and, and then you're influenced by it, then this technique is not for you. What I tend to listen for is a, a variety of things other than, than specific sounds. I, 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 I'll listen to the emotional elements of things and we're going to delineate some of the other things I listen to. Let's jump right into it, Zan. Um, let's pretend I couldn't get uh, I, I didn't have time to get permission from all the lawyers to use an existing mix I was working on, so I'm just going to pull out a, a song from the past, uh, Silky Fine, Romeo and Juliet, the instrumentals on here, so I thought the instrumental would be, be kind of cool to use. I'm going to play a piece of that for you. Get out of headphone mode on my have a set. Okay, so let's pretend like that's our mix. Let's do this. Let's start by muting our mix. Um, normally I let it bang just into the red, but for the sake of today I'm just going to put a piece of tape so I can remember which LEDs are lit up. So here's where my mix is hitting on Romeo and Juliet. Now let's try a, another mix that we're going to kind of compare to. So there we go. Looks like it's about the same. Um, normally, uh, normally I ask for criticisms and suggestions and stuff. Uh, on this particular technique, don't bother, I ain't going to read them. If you got something positive to say, fine. If this, if this technique isn't for you, then it's not for you. I know it's not the best thing in the world. It's just the way I learn, and so I'm sharing it with you. Um, so now let's, let's, let's monitor again. So now we're hearing... That's the mix we're going to compare to the young bird. Okay, first thing you notice is the mid range is quite a bit different. Uh, the compression techniques we use nowadays. Yeah, I, I picked this song because even ma you know, both of them are mastered, but uh, quite a bit of difference from 15 years ago to now. Now, on the young bird song, when I listen to that, what I listen for is I like to listen to the kick drum on my NS-10s. Uh, uh, Jason Joshua taught me uh, uh, this about this song. There's something about the kick drum on the 808 that, uh, not, uh, not the 808, 808, but the kick drum on the NS-10s really kind of lets you know what your kick drum should sound like on an NS-10 on the low end, because obviously you can hear the top end, but uh, that's a good reference for, for, the, for like, say, 200 cycles, 160 in there on your kick drums if, if, if you're, if you're kind of in that area. Also, too, the mid-range on this is really good, really tight. You probably wouldn't want to be any more mid-rangey than this. Now, I've made a list of a couple of things. I like this Natalie and Bruglia song to kind of show me the sibilance on vocals. If, if if I play my mix and then play that mix and my S's are not quite as bright, I, 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 I'll, I'll work on them because I think the S's on that song, when I hear that song on the radio or heard that song on the radio, I really like the way they sounded. So I use that kind of like to get me in the ballpark for S's. Now, another song that I like to use is um, um, this Teddy Riley song. Teddy is... A huge, huge influence on me. 
Uh, my friend Keith Andes came to me one day. We were mixing, and, 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 and I thought I was killing the mix. And Keith was like, Dave, new ball game. you got to hear this. Man, it, it, this mix was blowing me away. So uh, I, I kind of use it as a guide for mid-range and, and a parent level. Oh, sugar girl, you sexy thing. I like the way so, you swing. Go back and forth. I always want to be your lover. Just kind of darker the other song, which is not bad. We're, we're not talking bad or good. We're talking just, you know, what we're looking for. So, so we know we know if 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 this was our mix, we know well. If if we like it, we like it. Print, go home. If if you think maybe you want to go back and listen to the mid range on this and kind of get you a little more mid range, you'll know not to go past this, but to maybe. Anyway, it gives you an idea of kind of how to judge what's out in the real world. So, Teddy, good apparent level, um, not not a lot of sub low end like we use today, but uh, that, that particular mix works good in the rock world too because it doesn't have a lot of low end, but it also has, uh, by low end I mean the subby kind of low end, but the mid range is very aggressive. Now, so that's 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 what we use. For, that's what I kind of tend to listen to. I'm gonna play you a piece of a Mariah Carey song that I I listen to once in a while, because I like what uh, I'm pretty sure this was uh, Mick Kozowski's mix. Um, he was using digital EQ before a lot of people, and I like the graininess. I guess is the way to call it on this vocal. Real nice. So, so, you know, when you um, when you're listening to your vocal and you wanna you wanna know, God, am I too bright? Am I not bright enough? How am I gonna stack up against the rest of the world? That's a good judge for that. Um, let's click over to another. Now, I like uh, I like what Spike did on this. This this has a, another uh, use of compression transient designer uh, on the drums. Uh, the mid-range on this is really strong. I like the way the vocal sits, so here we go. Waves keep on crushing on me for some reason. Sometimes I think my snare, sometimes I think my snare is like loud enough and then I'll, I'll hear a song like that and I'm like, wow, that sounds a little more exciting than mine because of the placement of the snare, so, you know, Check that out. I'm going to play you a John Legend song mixed by Manny American. I love this mix. It's, it's a very honest mix. Um, and sometimes I like to listen to it just to make sure that um, I can follow it because my mixes would probably be, probably be characterized as having maybe a little more top end. And here again, that's not a right or wrong. Uh, I, 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 I love Manny's work, but I gotta follow it on the radio sometimes. I wanna, I wanna make sure that, that I can follow it. So this me, is. It's me. Maybe I bore you. No, no, it's my fault. Cause I can't. Really, 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 really good. Uh, what Manny can do, not too many other people can do. So I like that song just to kind of make sure that uh, that my mix doesn't sound too bright compared to that mix. And then it's a good judge for low end. Manny's always good on the low end too. Uh, I, another song I like is um, one of Phil Tan's mixes. Uh, this 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 particular song, um, I like the way Phil put the instruments relative to the drums. If and sometimes in hip hop, you'll have the instruments a little lower than you would relative to the drums um, on say an, uh, an R&B song or, or a pop song. And in, in, in rock circles, you would have the guitars a little louder than uh, than uh, the drums sometimes. But I like the way Phil did the ratio he, he chose for this is really good. That little organy kind of sound, it's up there. It's, it's so so sometimes when when I'm trying to when I say sometimes. A lot of you guys, when you get tired, you just run into the bedroom, go to sleep. Uh, I usually have to finish a mix a day, and so uh, I'm making a lot of critical critical decisions after uh, 
10 straight hours of mixing without a break. So sometimes the references will just kind of steer me back into line. A lot of people take an ear break. Uh, what I tend to do is just play DJ and play some of these things and then switch back and forth rapidly to my stuff and, 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 and I, I, it keeps me honest. Uh, my all-time favorite mixer in the world, Bob Power did this. It's a, it's a root song. I, I, I like the combination of, of where he placed his top end, where he placed his bottom end, his sub. Uh, I don't think I'm going to play long enough for you to hear the sub, but you'll, you'll recognize this is a root song. I like his stereo field. I like the width. Um, this is a good song, to, to, especially when it gets going. It's a really good song to kind of make sure that that, that you're placing your, your, your top end instruments in the mix properly because uh, if you're louder than that, you're probably too loud. If you're lower, you're probably too low. Now here again, footnote before, uh, before we eat up all the bandwidth on the internet telling me that real men don't do this. Maybe they don't. But uh, most of you guys out there are not doing this for a living. You're, you're trying to and you want to. And so these are just kind of techniques, maybe for the newer guy, maybe for the more experienced guy. I don't know. You're going to have to make up your mind about that. But I would highly recommend that you modify these techniques to fit your own style. Kind of go a little, little uh, I, I started to say old school. I hate to think of John Gass as old school, but one thing you'll notice about this song is, uh, here again, it's an older song in the level, but I like what John did on the background vocals. So I listened to background vocals on this song. And then um, if I was doing a ballad or something, I might, I might take a listen to this song. It's a very classy mix. The mix just sounds expensive. I said this to the background. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to play them. Okay, so we don't hear any backgrounds. Buy that or get, get an iTunes version of that. I'm going to leave you with one last song. Uh, the, the, the people that know me know that, that uh, I can be a little, um, my emotions are kind of like on a roller coaster during the course of the day. And sometimes I need to just get feeling good. And whenever I just need to feel good, I play this song. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't even want you to get it. But this is my favorite pick me up, just have fun song. Give me up some of that thug. Makes me smile. Just makes me happy. So sometimes um, I was doing a, a mix for Cash Money about uh, how long ago is that? Maybe a month, about a month ago, and and it needed a, a it needed it had some 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 kids in the course, and it needed a just to be happy and vibey, and I uh, it was about I guess it's already about two in the morning, and I'm I'm starting to work on the vocals, and I, I just I just didn't have a clue. And uh, so I played that, and it just made me happy. So I just worked on my song till it made me happy, and, it, and I think it worked. So anyway, I um, hope this will help you out. I know this is not a, 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 our most technical into the lair, but it's something I get a lot of questions about, and I just wanted to share it with you. Thanks, guys.